Welcome to Mikon's hardware. Budget PC hunters are already aware and pretty much knowledgeable about Xeon E5 V3 CPUs. For example, me and some other YouTubers have already reviewed Xeon E5 2620 V3, E5 2640 V3, E5 1650, 1660 V3, and of course the famous E5 2678 V3. These days, E5 V4 CPUs are slowly going down in price, and now on AliExpress you can buy E5 2680 V4 for around 140-150 euros. In this video I'm going to compare E5 2678 V3 with Turbo Boost Unlock against E5 2680 V4. Most of you probably know about such thing as Turbo Boost Unlock, which forces all CPU cores to work at the maximum turbo frequency. With E5 2678 V3 this is 3.3 GHz. Unfortunately, this hack is only applicable for a Xeon E5 V3 CPUs which have locked multiplier. CPUs such as E5 1650 V3 and 1660 V3 have unlocked multiplier. You can overclock these CPUs, but you cannot apply the Turbo Boost Unlock hack. With the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs, there are no such possibilities either. Thus, E5 2680 V4 can only be overclocked using expensive branded X99 motherboards with BCLK clock. I think this kind of overclocking is pretty pointless, because uh, the branded X99 motherboards are pretty expensive, and for this money you better be with the cheap AM4 or LGA1151 platform. For this comparison I'm going to use Huanangzhi X99 TF motherboard for both of the CPUs. But first let's compare the technical specification of the CPUs. E5 2678 V3 has 12 cores, 24 threads. Maximum Turbo Boost clock frequency is 3.3 GHz. With the Turbo Boost unlocked, all 12 cores will be working at this frequency when needed. The CPU has 30 MB of cache, and the maximum supported RAM speed is DDR4 2133. E5 2680 V4 has two extra cores. It has 14 cores, 28 threads. V4 also has got 5 extra MB of cache, for the total of 35 MB. Maximum RAM speed has also increased to DDR4-2400. Looking at the ADA64 memory test results, we can see that E5 2680 V4 has slightly better memory read-write copy and latency results. Whether it's going to help Xeon E5 2680 V4 to take the lead in the games compared to E5 2678 V3, we will see a bit later. To make this comparison a bit more informative, I'm also adding test results from my previous video where I have tested Core i9-10900 engineering sample QTB1 as well as Core i5-10500 engineering sample QSRK and Xeon E5-1660 V3 overclocked to 4.2 GHz as well as Ryzen 5 5600X. For the graphics card, in all tests I'm using NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition and the rest of the configuration you can see on your screen. For this video I'm taking Xeon E5 2680 V4 results as 100%, the other values were calculated from here. Starting with the Cinebench R20, we can see that Ryzen 5 5600X with its 6 cores is providing very comparable performance to Xeon E5 2680 V4, which has 14 cores. This means single-core performance is 90% faster from the Ryzen CPU compared to E5 2680 V4. If we compare two Xeon CPUs, their performance is almost identical. Two extra cores of E5 2680 V4 helps the CPU to take 14% lead over Turbo Boost unlocked E5 2678 V3. 7-zip compression and decompression. All four CPUs are providing their comparable results. Nevertheless, E5 2680V4 was 8 and 4% faster than E5 2678V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock. Blender Open Data, BMW and Classroom Scenes. Here, E5 2680V4 completed the benchmark 18% faster than Xeon E5 2678V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock. Ryzen 5 5600X gives almost identical results to E5 2678V3, which means it was slightly slower than E5 2680V4. Puget Systems DaVinci Resolve Benchmark In general, DaVinci Resolve relies on a powerful graphics card, but the CPU is also utilized. At 1080p, when we are not GPU-bound, CPU is used the most. Here, Ryzen 5 5600X provides 46% better performance in comparison with the Xeon CPUs. 
But switching to 4K, we see that all three CPUs are providing very comparable performance, while E5 2680 V4 is 1% slower than E5 2678 V3. Handbrake. In this test, I am encoding 21 minutes video from 4K created by DaVinci Resolve into 1080p and 1440p to upload to YouTube. Ryzen 5 5600X is 26 and 31% faster compared to E5 2680 V4. E5 2678V3 with a Turbo Boost Unlock is about 10% faster than E5 2680V4. This test demonstrates that Handbrake is mostly relying on fast CPU cores rather than the number of these cores. These are all workstation benchmarks which I have completed for this video, so now let's switch to some games. Almost every video where I test Xeon CPUs in games, there will be some super knowledgeable guy who is trying to convince me that if I disable hyper-threading, Xeon CPUs will deliver 15-20% to better performance. That's why in this video I am comparing E5 2680 V4 with hyper-threading, disabled and enabled. Starting with Battlefield 5, we see that Ryzen 5 5600X is obviously leading both of the Xeons, but performance between E5 2678V3 and E5 2680V4 is almost identical. Disabling hyperthreading improves performance of E5 2680V4 by a few percent, but that's it. There is nowhere near you are getting extra 15 to 20 percent. Far Cry New Dawn. Almost in every video where I test Far Cry games, I'm saying that the game is using only one and a half CPU cores. It's still the case, and even in this video, Far Cry is still using only 1.5 CPU cores, that's why Ryzen 5 5600X is leading Xeon CPUs by 58 and 57%. This is a gigantic difference, but we have what we have. Lower clocked Xeon CPUs cannot match Ryzen 5 5600X. Comparing two Xeons to each other, we see that E5 2678V3 is slightly faster than E5 2680V4, even if we disable hyperthreading. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This is a rather weird game which can use multiple CPU cores, but at the same time it relies on an individual core speed. Here, Ryzen 5 5600X leads its Xeon competition by 44% when it comes to minimal frames per second. Average is very similar. 84 FPS with Ryzen CPU, 80 FPS with the Xeon CPUs. Comparing E5 2678V3 to E5 2680V4, we are getting almost identical performance. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Even though this is a very well-optimized game which is using DirectX 12 API and is able to utilize multiple CPU cores, 6-core Ryzen 5 5600X leads Xeon CPUs by 77 and 38 percent when talking about minimal and average frames per second. Comparing E5 2678V3 to E5 2680V4, we are again seeing exactly the same performance between these two CPUs. Disabling hyperthreading on E5 2680V4 improves performance by 3 and 6%, but again nowhere near 15 and 20% as someone claims. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a very GPU intensive game. At 1080p, even with RTX 2080 Ti and Maxed Balanced preset, we are GPU bound. Here all three CPUs are delivering almost identical performance on average, minimal FPS is very inconsistent with this game. But looking at the numbers, E5 2680V4 gets the best value, 51 frames per second, while E5 2678 has slightly lower value, 47 frames per second. F1 2019. One more game which is utilizing DirectX 12 API. It is loading multiple CPU cores, but it still heavily relies on IPC. Here, Ryzen 5 5600X beats Xeon CPUs by 55 and 41%. Xeon CPUs between each other are providing almost identical performance, where E5 2678V3 is faster than E5 2680V4, and it doesn't matter if you enable or disable hyperthreading. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. It's really hard to benchmark this game, as I mentioned in my previous video, CPUs which have only 6 cores, such as Core i5 and Ryzen 5, are getting very big performance hit when I start MSI after burner. When I use this program to measure performance, I experience stutters and frame drops. Without MSI after burner, the gaming experience is much better. Nevertheless, the numbers are numbers, and using MSI after burner, I'm getting the following. Ryzen 5 5600X was 17% slower when it comes to 1% low compared to E5 2680V4. Disabling hyperthreading on E5 2680V4 improves performance by 8 and 
when comparing 1% low and average FPS. In general, if you are playing campaign of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, all three CPUs will deliver almost identical performance. The last game in benchmark is 3D Mark. Here I test Time Spy and Fire Strike. As expected, Ryzen 5 5600X in Fire Strike is leading Xeon CPUs by a significant 23% margin. In Time Spy, all three CPUs are indicating almost identical performance, where E5 2680v4 is the fastest between the Xeon configurations. Strangely enough, here disabling hyperthreading with E5 2680v4 actually decreases performance of the CPU. Now let's combine all of these results together and take a look at the averages. On average, E5 2678v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock was only 5% slower than E5 2680v4 when it comes to productivity workloads. In games, E5 2678v3 was 1% faster than E5 2680v4. Yes, you can disable hyper-threading and get those extra 1-2% with E5 2680v4, but it will be only enough to match E5 2678v3 in games. When it comes to the power consumption, E5 2680v4 is a slightly better option. While idly, E5 2678v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock consumes around 71W, while E5 2680v4 consumes only 51W. Under Blender benchmark, E5 2678 takes 187W, while E5 2680v4 takes 170W. Please note, these values are representing entire system power consumption and not just the CPU. With these results on hand, I can safely say that right now it does not make any sense to buy E5 2680v4. Its current price is almost twice as much as E5 2678v3. If you are looking for a budget workstation, you will be much better with E5 2678v3. It only loses 5% when you apply Turbo Boost Unlock. If you are looking for a budget gaming computer, then buying 14-core E5 2680v4 doesn't make any sense at all. The faster memory speed of E5 2678v4 and slightly improved IPC cannot compensate lack of Turbo Boost Unlock for v4 CPUs compared to E5 2678v3. In my opinion, E5 2680v4 has to go down in price to be anyhow competitive with E5 2678v3. With E5 2678v3 you can also use cheap DDR3 memory. The difference between DDR3 and DDR4 is not that big as it used to be, but still DDR3 is slightly cheaper than DDR4. If you use a motherboard such as Huanan GX99TF, then you can save some pennies using DDR3 memory with E5 2678v3. This is not possible with E5 2680v4. I hope this short video will provide you some answers regarding what you can expect from the Xeon V4 CPUs when their prices go down to some reasonable values. But for now though, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye.